This is very interesting story of a shepherd and how its fate gets changed. In a certain village there was a shepherd who had hundreds of goats but no land. Thinking that these goats would menace their fields, the villagers warned the shepherd that he should leave the village or buy some land. So the shepherd raised a loan and bought a small strip of land. This plot was so barren that nothing but maize could be sown in it. It turned out that even the maize crops the shepherd raised in it was very very poor. After some time, the shepherd's sight began to fade and his young son took charge of the field. One day, the three deities of harvest, wealth and courage came by the shepherd's field, arguing as to which one of them was the most powerful. Look at this field, said the goddess of harvest. If only it yields a good harvest, the shepherd boy will not have a single problem in his life. I shall enter the field and make him rich. So saying, she sat in the maize field. I am the real benefactor of mankind. See what can I do for this poor guy, said the goddess of wealth. She turned herself into a bag of money and waited by the path. All your efforts are useless if I sit upon his head, said the goddess of courage. She at once sat upon the shepherd's boy's head. When Harvey sat in it, the field was completely transformed. May strokes of enormous height stood thick in the field. Their heads bent down with huge ears of corn. But the young shepherd got frightened at the sight. Because courage was sitting on his head, he started home to report to his father that a strange disease had overtaken the maze. The boy took the path by which they lay a bag of money. But he said to himself, Let me see how far I can walk with my eyes shut. He did not open his eyes until he passed the bag of money. Reaching home, the boy told his father that the crop was ruined by some pest and sag and suggested that they should sell the strip of the land at any cost. His blind father agreed to sell it if only there was anyone to buy it. The boy returned to the field and saw a stranger gazing at the unique maize crop. He was a trader. He saw many countries but nowhere did he see maize of such a good quality. He approached the shepherd boy, learned that the field belonged to him and offered to buy it at a very good price. Prompted by the goddess of wealth who was trying her best to do good with the boy, the trader offered to keep the boy in his service on a monthly pay. The trader emptied all his carts and filled them with the unique maize, leaf, stock and the car. He took the boy with him and proceeded on his journey. Presently the caravan reaches a city. The trader took specimens of his maize to the king and said, Perhaps your highness never saw maize of this kind. I have plenty of it. I shall part it with a cartload in exchange of an elephant. If this corn were to be planted in your kingdom, your people need never starve. The king took one cartload of the corn and gave the trader an elephant in exchange. The trader sold another cartload to some of the rich landlords of the city. With this money, he dressed the boy in royal brocade so that he looked like a prince. The trader put him on the elephant and proceeded on. He told everyone on the way that the young man riding the elephant was the king of the land of gold and that he was his minister. Thus they arrived at the next city. The king of that place was already aware of the corning of the king and his minister from the land of gold and received them with great pomp and honor. He put them up in the palace of mirrors and treated them grandly. After food and rest, the trader took the boy to the king's court. He said, in us kingdom, even the poorest land yields such golden maize that is why one can see nothing but gold everywhere in our land. The king and queen thought that it would be nice if they could marry their daughter to the king of gold. When they made this suggestion to the trader, he said that he would find out his king's mind. Back at the lodge, the trader told the boy, you are to marry the king's daughter. The boy refused in horror saying that the regal ladies were shrews. Scroundle, you forget that you are my hardling. Disobey me and I shall break your bones, said the trader. He went back to the king and reported that his king consented to the marriage, but he warned the king that the marriage shall take place according to the customs prevailing in our land only. On the day of marriage, a palanquin was sent to the palace of mirrors to face the bridegroom. 
The boy was carried out of the house, tied hand and foot, and was dumped in the palanquin by four servants. This was taken to be one of the customs of the land of gold. The marriage ceremony over the bridegroom was sent to the bridal chamber. The trader told the king two soldiers shall wait outside the chamber with drawn swords and threatened to kill the bridegroom if he tries to escape before the bride arrives. This too was taken to be one of the queer customs of the land of gold. Looking around the gorgeously decorated and brilliantly lit bed chamber, the shepherd boy thought that it must be the temple of the goddess to whom he was going to be sacrificed. He tried to run away but the man at the gate showed him the sword and frightened him. The princess arrived and he thought it was the goddess. Here she came to gobble me up, he spoke. In desperation, he gave the princess a mighty push and bolted out of the room. When he reached the lodge, the traitor gave him a sound thrashing and said, Worthless wretch, I married the princess to you and you run away from her. Next day, the king sent for the traitor and asked him, What made your king so angry with my daughter that he pushed her away and left her? Don't you know that rain poured down the elephant trunks last night, said the trader. Naturally, the king was indignant and such a time was chosen for him to meet the bride. The king ordered his purohits to be whipped for his blunder and demanded that they fix a better murta for the consummation of the daughter's marriage with the king of gold. The Purohis apologized for the mistake and fixed another murta the next night. But once again, the shepherd boy ran away from his bride and got thrashed by the trader. Once again, the trader was put to the trouble of answering the king. Your Purohis seems to be ignorant fools. Last night, it appears that train fell like elephant heads. The trader told the king. The Purohis were again chastised and they fixed another murta, the very best one, the third night. If you run back tonight, I shall certainly cut off your head and go my way. The trader warned the shepherd boy. Either the goddess eat me or the trader kills, the shepherd boy thought. Me one way or the other way, I am fated to die tonight. The shepherd thought as he sat awaiting the princess. You must remember that the goddess of the courage was still sitting upon the poor shepherd's head. She now turned to her two companions and asked them, is there any better you can do to the poor foot? The goddess of harvest and wealth accepted defeat and begged their companion to save their footage and she came down from the head of the shepherd youth. Just then the miracle happened. The princess stepped into the chamber. There was a remarkable change in the shepherd. He got up on seeing the princess and approached her. He accosted her courteously and made formal inquiries about her health and so on. The princess was very glad to find her husband so decorous and cultured. Thanks to the goddess of courage, the poor shepherd boy now became a prince and the husband of a princess. He settled in the same place and became king after his father-in-law. The trader became his minister and served his master faithfully. Ever since the goddess of harvest and wealth walk only behind the goddess of courage, those whom the goddess of courage avoids, the goddess of harvest and wealth also avoids. So friends, if you like the story, please press bell icon and hit the subscribe button.